As Thomson Reuters Labs, we engaged in exploratory research to push the boundaries of Westlaw UK 2018 case data, opened through Thomson Reuters Europe's Legal Tech Data Challenge. Westlaw, one of the largest platforms for conducting legal research, draws on over 125 years of experience to deliver legal information faster and more accurately than anyone else. Litigation issues can be, and often are, highly complex, and they evolve frequently. Recognizing this, the case law data in Westlaw is continuously maintained and updated with a rigorous editorial process which ensures that every case is properly indexed and checked for accuracy. This is the Westlaw homepage, a search portal where legal practitioners can quickly find cases or other primary and secondary sources that meet their various research needs. Suppose that we are interested in researching a specific piece of litigation, one that is complex and high value. A good example is provided by the Tatnef litigation, PJSC Tatnef v. Bogliubov and others. A complex dispute in which a Russian oil company sued multiple Ukrainian businessmen in relation to the alleged misappropriation of funds due to it. There is a range of raw Westlaw data that can be unpacked, analyzed and organized in a more visually accessible way, using the same rigorous editorial process as Westlaw. This litigation produced multiple High Court decisions over the course of 2018, which we can analyze as follows. We can type in the case name or another identifier and click on the relevant match. The Westlaw case digest that gets displayed is organized for swift identification of key information. Some litigation is obviously lengthier and more complicated than others. Therefore, it might not be entirely straightforward to analyze the story of the litigation and all of its associated data at the same time. Westlaw also has a feature which enables cases to take another visual form, a flowchart, guiding the legal researcher through each stage of a case, broadly in the order that it takes place. This view already provides a window into the power of data visualization, which can distill and present an immense amount of information in an accessible way. Can we go even further? Suppose you are conducting legal research and looking for the information ecosystem of a particular case. Achieving a successful understanding of a litigious scenario requires a great deal more than knowledge of the process. It usually depends on a careful review of complex interrelated information that needs to be internalized in order to fully grasp the holistic picture. This complexity can be simplified by using what is known as a network graph. A network graph is a collection of nodes and edges. In this context, nodes represent entities, such as parties or solicitors and edges represent connections and relationships between different nodes, such as a case citing another case, or a solicitor representing a claimant. We can cast data from Westlaw into this abstract representation to uncover patterns and insights into our data that were previously locked behind hours of painstaking research. Starting with our landmark case, PJSC Tatneft vs Bogliubov, as a node, we can start building out its connections. Here are some insights we can immediately produce and visualize from a network graph representation. What are all the cases that are intimately tied to our landmark case? And who are the parties involved in each of these cases? Who were the judges presiding over these cases and in which court were these cases heard? Who were the law firms and barristers involved in these cases? And were there any that participated in all of the relevant cases? Which pieces and what types of legislation are cited by these cases? What other cases are cited by our cases of interest? The most elegant thing about a network graph is that it is very scalable. We can scale out the graph to include all of the data present in a Westlaw case as additional nodes and attributes. There are a huge array of resources, including news articles, journals, books and case reports, and other secondary resources that we can include in our network graph. These resources have always been available, but it's not until we generate a view where such disparate pieces of information are contextualized and presented holistically that we can uncover higher level insights. Can we see beyond our immediate neighbors, our local network? Sometimes our legal researcher might want to check what other cases the solicitors of a case were involved in, or what other cases the judge heard. Who is a friend of my friend, a neighbor of my neighbor? In graphs, this question is an invitation to traverse and explore. The closest neighbors of a node are those reachable by a single connection. But we can also consider nodes which are the connections of our connections, 
two, three or more steps away from our original landmark case and its neighborhood. The further we zoom out from our main case, the more connections come into view. And depending on the purposes of our legal research, we can zoom out as far as we'd like and explore not just specific connections, but also examine as many remote, high-level connections as we would like. If we continue searching, eventually we are going to reach the limits of our ecosystem, the 2000 plus High Court cases from 2018 and their attributes. Now suppose you are a senior partner, looking at the entire corpus of West Low UK cases, not knowing where to start. How might the network graph view help them focus on what to pay attention to? Follow the money we often hear. So how do they go about examining the value of claims in our ecosystem? One of the powers of network graph views is the fact that they can be enriched with additional datasets. Let's consider the Thomson Reuters Lawtel dataset, which includes information on the value of the original claim. Can we help our senior partner to see cases with the highest value claims? Let's merge the two datasets and make the size of the nodes proportionate to the monetary value of the claim. Which cases in 2018 were of the highest value? Let's take a look at the top 10. And which one of these 10 cases has the highest value? Filtering on monetary value shines a light on our landmark case. It is one of the highest value claims considered by the courts in 2018, in excess of £200 million, a fascinating development from a data exploration perspective. So what other questions can we answer instantly if we ask the graph? Which judges had the most positive outcomes, such as the judge granting the claim or allowing the appeal? We could just as easily check which judges dismissed the most appeals. Which commercial firms had most judgments handed down in 2018? We can also see that the government legal department had the most judgments handed down in 2018. Can we verify which law firm litigated the most intellectual property cases that reached judgment in our 2018 dataset? What were the most cited cases of 2018? What were the most frequent parties involved in cases that reached judgment in our 2018 dataset? Is this surprising to you? While the medium or representation of legal information plays an important part in understanding a case, the need of referring back to the primary sources can never be called into question. Anyone conducting legal research will still have to drill down to the judgment itself, namely judgments and case citations. But through representing the data in this connected medium, we introduce an entirely new way of considering the data behind the judgment, opening a new paradigm into legal research. How would you use this data? What possibilities can you imagine? See possibility and think big.